Hello friends and welcome to my channel. Today we'll be learning about the origin, insertion, nerve supply and action of the muscles of the body. Now let's look at the superficial muscles of the anterior aspect of the forearm. To begin with, we have five muscles, mainly the pronator teres, the flexor carpi radialis, the palmaris longus, the flexor digitorum superficialis and the flexor carpi ulnaris. Now an easy way to remember these is by the logical arrangement of these muscles. Now we know that the radius bone lies here, the ulna bone lies here. So this is the radial side, this is the ulna side. So firstly we have the flexor carpi radialis towards the radial side, then the flexor carpi ulnaris. Now these are the digits. So we have the flexor digitorum superficialis for the digits, the superficial muscle, flexor digitorum superficialis. Then we have the palmaris longus, it is a long muscle, just consider it that way so that we can easily remember them. Palmaris longus, so palm which relates to this part, so palmaris longus. Then we have the pronator teres which helps in the pronation. Now this is the pronation. So we have the flexor carpi radialis, the flexor carpi ulnaris, the flexor digitorum superficialis, the palmaris longus and the pronator teres. Now let's look at each one of them in detail. First let's look at the pronator teres. It originates from the medial epicondyle of the humerus. Now we can note that all the flexors of the forearm that lies on the anterior aspect originate from the medial epicondyle of the humerus. This is the right humerus. This is its medial epicondyle. The pronator teres, the flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus, flexor digitorum superficialis and the flexor carpi ulnaris originate from here. Now let's look at its insertion. The pronator teres inserts into the middle of the lateral aspect of the shaft of the radius. The pronator teres inserts into the middle of the lateral aspect of the shaft of the radius that is right here. This is the pronator teres. It originates from the medial epicondyle of the humerus. It inserts into the middle of the lateral aspect of the shaft of the radius right here. Moving on to its nerve supply, it is supplied by the median nerve. Now we can note that all the superficial muscles of the anterior aspect of the forearm are supplied by the median nerve except for the flexor carpi ulnaris. Now the action of the pronator teres is the pronation of the forearm. We have the pronator teres which helps in the pronation. Now this is the pronation. Now as a whole the pronator teres originates from the medial epicondyle of the humerus and inserts into the middle of the lateral aspect of the radius. Moving on to the next muscle, we have the flexor carpi radialis. It originates from the medial epicondyle of the humerus. Looking at its insertion, the flexor carpi radialis inserts into the bases of the second and third metacarpals. The flexor carpi radialis inserts into the bases of the second and third metacarpal, that is right here and here. This is the flexor carpi radialis. It originates from the medial epicondyle of the humerus. It inserts into the bases of the second and third metacarpals, that is right here. It is supplied by the median nerve as I had said earlier. The action of the flexor carpi radialis is that it flexes and abducts the hand at the wrist joint. This is the flexion of the wrist joint and this is the abduction. Now as a whole, the flexor carpi radialis originates from the medial epicondyle of the humerus. It passes downwards and this area that you see right here, it inserts into the basis of the second and third metacarpal right here. Moving on to the next muscle, we have the palmaris longus. It originates from the medial epicondyle of the humerus. It inserts into the flexor retinaculum and the palma aponeurosis. This 
is the palmaris longus. It originates from the medial epicondyle of the humerus. It inserts into the flexor retinaculum and the palma aponeurosis. It is supplied by the median nerve. The action of the palmaris longus includes the flexion at the wrist joint. This is the flexion of the wrist joint. And moving on to the next muscle, we have the flexor digitorum superficialis. It originates from two heads, the humero ulnar head and the radial head. The humero ulnar head originates from the medial epicondyle of the humerus and the medial border of the coronoid process of the ulna, while the radial head originates from the anterior oblique line of the shaft of the radius. This is the right ulna. The humero ulna head of the flexor digitorum superficialis originates from the medial border of the coronoid process that is right here as well as the medial epicondyle of the humerus. This is the right radius. The radial head of the flexor digitorum superficialis originates from the anterior oblique line of the shaft of the radius right here. Moving on to its insertion, the flexor digitorum superficialis divides into four tendons. Each tendon divides into two slips, which inserts into the sides of the middle phalanx of the second to fifth digits. The two slips of each tendon of the flexor digitorum superficialis inserts into the sides of the middle phalanx of second to fifth digits, that is right here on the sides. This is the flexor digitorum superficialis of the hand. It has two heads, the humero ulnar head and the radial head. The humero ulnar head originates from the medial epicondyle of the humerus and the medial border of the coronoid process of the ulna. The radial head originates from the anterior oblique line of the radius. Now, Let's look at its insertion. The muscle divides into four tendons, as you can see right here. These four tendons, each of which divide into two slips, as you can see right here. These slips insert into the sides of the middle phalanx of the second to fifth digits. It is supplied by the median nerve. The action of the flexor digitorum superficialis includes that it flexes the middle phalanx of the fingers. This is the flexion of the middle phalanx of the fingers. Now as a whole, the flexor digitorum superficialis originates from a humero ulnar head and a radial head. The humero ulnar head originates from the medial epicondyle of the humerus right here and the medial border of the coronoid process of the ulna right here. The radial head originates from the anterior oblique line that you can see right here. Now it moves downwards. This part is shown here. It inserts by two slips of four tendons which inserts into the sides of the middle phalanx of the second to fifth digits right here. Moving on to the next muscle, we have the flexor carpi ulnaris. It originates from the medial epicondyle of the humerus and the medial aspect of the olecranon process and the posterior border of the ulna. The flexor carpi ulnaris originates from the medial epicondyle of the humerus as well as the medial aspect of the olecranon process right here and the posterior border of the ulna right here. It is inserted into the pisiform bone. The insertion is prolonged to the hook of the hamate and the base of the fifth metacarpal bone. The flexor carpi ulnaris is inserted into the pisiform bone that you see right here. This is the flexor carpi ulnaris. It originates from the medial epicondyle of the humerus and the medial aspect of the olecranon process and the posterior border of the ulna. It inserts into the pisiform bone. It is supplied by the ulna nerve. The action of flexor carpi ulnaris includes that it flexes and adducts the hand at the wrist joint. This is the flexion of the wrist and this 
is the adduction. Now as a whole, the flexor carpi ulnaris originates from the medial epicondyle of the humerus and the medial aspect of the olecranon process and the posterior border of the ulna. And it inserts, as you can see in the book, into the pisiform bone right here. Now let's move on to the deep muscles of the forearm. We have three muscles, the flexor digitorum profundus, the flexor pollicis longus and the pronator quadratus. Now let's look at an easy way to remember the deep muscles of the anterior aspect of the forearm. We have three muscles. Firstly, there is the flexor digitorum profundus. Now we all know that there was a muscle called flexor digitorum superficialis which was a superficial muscle and it supplied the digits. Now here we have the flexor digitorum profundus. It is a deep muscle that supplies the digits. Now moving on to the second muscle that is a flexor pollicis longus. Now the word pollicis refers to the thumb. So the second muscle is a flexor pollicis longus. Now the third deep muscle is the pronator quadratus. We have already seen the pronator teres in the superficial muscles. Here we have the pronator quadratus. To begin with, we have the flexor digitorum profundus. It originates from the upper three fourths of the anterior and medial surfaces of the shaft of the ulna. It originates from the upper three fourths of the posterior border as well as the medial surfaces of the olecranon process and the coronoid process of the ulna. So basically the flexor digitorum profundus originates wholly from the ulna. The flexor digitorum profundus originates from the upper three fourths of the anterior and medial surfaces of the shaft of the ulna. It also originates from the upper three fourths of the posterior border and the medial surfaces of the olecranon process and the coronoid process. Moving on to its insertion, the flexor digitorum profundus inserts into the palma surface of the base of the distal phalanx. The flexor digitorum profundus inserts into the palma surface of the base of the distal phalanges, right here. This is the flexor digitorum profundus. It originates from the upper three fourths of the anterior and medial surfaces of the shaft of the ulna. The upper three fourths of the posterior border of the ulna and the medial surfaces of the olecranon process and the coronoid process of the ulna. It inserts into the palma surface of the bases of the distal phalanxes, right here. Now looking at its nerve supply, the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus is supplied by the ulna nerve while the lateral half is supplied by the anterior interosseous nerve, which is a deep branch of the medial nerve. Its action includes that it is a flexor of the distal phalanges. It flexes other joints of the digits, the fingers and the wrist, and it is a chief gripping muscle. Now, as a whole, the flexor digitorum profundus originates from the upper three fourths of the anterior and medial surfaces of the shaft of the ulna, the upper three fourths of the posterior border, the medial surfaces of the olecranon process and the coronoid process, and it inserts into the palma surfaces of the base of the distal phalanges. Moving on to the next muscle. We have the flexor pollicis longus. It originates from the upper three fourths of the anterior surface of the shaft of the radius. The flexor pollicis longus originates from the upper three fourths of the anterior surface of the shaft of the radius. It inserts into the palma surface of the distal phalanx of the thumb. The flexor pollicis longus inserts into the palma surface of the distal phalanx of the thumb right here. This is the flexor pollicis longus. It originates from the upper three fourths of the anterior surface of the shaft of the radius. It inserts into the palma surface 
of the distal phalanx of the thumb. It is supplied by the anterior interosseous nerve. Its action is that it flexes the distal phalanx of the thumb. This is the flexion of the distal phalanx of the thumb. Now, as a whole, the flexor pollicis longus originates from the upper three fourths of the anterior surface of the shaft of the radius and it inserts into the palmar surface of the distal phalanx of the thumb, right here. Moving on to the next muscle, we have the pronator quadratus. It originates from the oblique ridge in the lower one fourth of the anterior surface of the shaft of the ulna. The pronator quadratus originates from an oblique ridge in the lower one fourth of the anterior surface of the shaft of the ulna. The insertion of the pronator quadratus is by two fibers, the superficial fibers and the deep fibers. The superficial fibers insert into the lower one fourth of the anterior surface and the anterior border of the radius, while the deep fibers insert into the triangular area above the ulna notch. The superficial fibers of the pronator quadratus insert into the lower one fourth of the anterior surface and the anterior border of the radius. The deep fibers insert into the triangular area above the ulna notch right here. It is supplied by the anterior interosseous nerve. Now the action of the pronator quadratus is that the superficial fibers pronate the forearm while the deep fibers bind the lower end of the radius and the ulna. As a whole, the pronator quadratus originates by an oblique ridge on the lower one-fourth of the anterior surface of the shaft of the ulna right here. It inserts via superficial fibers that insert into the lower one-fourth of the anterior surface and anterior border of the radius. The deep fibers insert into the triangular area above the ulna notch right here. So they lie in this manner. I hope you found this video helpful. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.